Welcome to Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for this Friday, August 10th, 2012. We begin with a story from the world of biology. A scientist at Caltech has been studying termites because they may hold the key to better biofuels. Before we get into termites, let's talk about human digestion, which, as you may know, is helped by a variety of microbes. We mention that because termites digestion also involves microbes. In fact, they're completely dependent on it. Without the community of microbes in their gut, termites literally can't digest wood, which, in case you didn't know, is mainly what they eat. The fact termites can derive energy from wood is actually of great interest, especially because they do it so efficiently. Certainly, many animals eat plants, getting some energy digesting the cellulose and other structural components, but in the process, produce methane. So, understanding how termites survive on wood without producing methane, and usually in environments low in water, would really benefit biofuel development. Right now, most biofuel is ethanol fermented from corn, sugarcane, or other plants, but this process doesn't generally harness energy stored in cellulose. Now, the termites' microbes are extremely good at breaking down this wood material into a compound called pryovate. This is a compound you may have heard of studying cellular respiration, and it's an intermediary compound in many biological processes. For now, a main challenge is studying the microbes outside the termites, although there's been some success with around six species. Still, the entire community is extremely complex, containing hundreds of species. It could take over a decade to understand and harness the system. Next is a quick update from the world of nanotechnology, also related to alternative energy. Researchers from the University of Toronto have achieved record levels of efficiency with a particular type of solar cell. This specific type is known as a collodial quantum dot film, quantum dots being nanometer-sized particles made from a semiconductor material. We've discussed them before in Brainstorm, as they can be designed to react to very specific wavelengths of light. However, in this application, the quantum dots are being used to harness the widest range of light possible, including visible infrared and ultraviolet. By reacting to essentially the entire solar spectrum, a record 7% efficiency was achieved converting the sun's energy into usable electricity. In order to achieve this record, the researchers had to solve several challenges with this type of solar cell, one of which was electron traps. Impurities or defects in the material disrupt the flow of electrons, but the researchers found that this could be resolved by adding chlorine atoms after the quantum dots are synthesized. Next, they introduced short organic compounds. These help link the quantum dots within the film, increasing their density. It's very promising that this type of solar technology was able to be improved, specifically because quantum dots are relatively cheap to manufacture. Research will continue to develop this type of solar cell, hopefully leading to cheap and effective solar power. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider subscribing and be sure to check the links in the video description.